You're stuck in traffic on your way to your destination, except you know this must be the fastest option. Ever wondered, why didn't they just add another road that would bypass the whole thing? So let's add this new road. Most people would think that this would reduce traffic, but really you'd have the same if not more traffic when using this new route. What you have just experienced is Breas' paradox. Let's say you need to travel across town to get to work or the gym or whatever and that people in the surrounding areas also need to get to these locations. There are two main routes to take, one and two, each of equal distance and each route takes exactly the same time. Taking each route must be a 50-50 split because each individual has no reason to take one route more than another. We can say that part of this journey has a constant time period but another section's time is dependent on the number of cars present. As per your request, we now introduce a super fast bridge that connects these two routes. Intuitively speaking, this could only improve the situation for the drivers as they have now gained an additional option that they can ignore if they so choose to. Paradoxically, however, this actually increases the expected travel time. The ultra fast bridge takes two minutes to get across. We now have a problem. The bridge is so efficient that every driver would want to use it. In particular, both of the old roads will never be used as they are simply outclassed by the bridge. Now, if everyone takes this new route, what if we took the old route that no one would be on? More traffic again. Just like you, everyone has exactly the same idea and a bit like puffing in poker, we cannot predict which route they may take in attempt to get to the shortest route possible, where that means people trying to double, triple, quadruple bluff each other to get to the fastest route. But there's one question that still remains. Could we ever solve traffic by adding more roads? I introduced the buff toll. I say buffed because instead of just simply charging prices for on and off peak, we now look at the demand from cars at the exact busiest times. When the demand for using said roads is high, increase the price it costs to use these roads. This would mean people will be more likely to use these roads during quiet hours if they don't have to pay such extreme prices. More demand means price of toll increases. The number of people who really need to get to their destination will pay, but the people who don't want to pay find alternatives. The high demand road is not as busy and is now in low demand. Toll price decreases, so more people are likely to enter the toll for more efficient routes. This creates more demand, which means the price of toll increases again. As you can see, it's starting to form a bit of a loop of high to low demand. Imagine a graph of toll costs with toll demand. However, this relies on the assumption that the flow of cars moving through this general area is generally similar throughout the day, but given working times and other factors, the effects would likely be enhanced at those times during the day. And while this does work to an extent in random situations where point A and B can be the supermarket to the gym, the issue is that people don't really like to pay for tolls. In this environment, people are driven by only one factor efficiency. No matter any externals that are placed, they will always go for this ideal route in the paradox, which means that only some people will use this toll road. The main underlying issue with this whole concept is that more cars create more traffic, so why not remove traffic totally? Public transport. If everyone just abandoned their cars and took the train or some alternative, wouldn't it mean no traffic, so no paradox? This is why a city without public transport would descend into total chaos from a constant gridlock.